Hello students. Today we will study about the second part of the chapter, the elixir of life. I request you all to go through my channel and watch the first part and then go through this video. So let's begin. Soil erosion occurs in successive steps, the earliest of which may easily pass unnoticed. In the later stages, the cutting up and washing away of the earth is only too painfully apparent in the formation of deep gullies and ravens which make all agriculture impossible. Sudden burst of excessively heavy rain resulting in a large runoff of surplus water are the principal factors in causing soil erosion. Contributory causes are the slope of the land, removal of the natural protective coat of vegetation, the existence of ruts, along which the water can flow with rapidly gathering momentum and the absence of any checks to such flow. Incredibly, large quantities of precious soil can be washed away if such conditions exist, as is unhappily too often the case. In this paragraph, the writer C. V. Raman he tells about soil erosion, and he tells how it occurs. So he tells it occurs in successive steps. That is, it has many steps, and the earliest of which may not be noticed. That is, we may not recognize soil erosion in the first stage itself. In the later stages, the cutting up and washing away of the earth is only too painfully apparent. What is apparent? Clear in the formation of deep gullies and ravines now what are deep gullies what are gullies it's nothing but small narrow passage and ravines are also the same it's a narrow deep valley that is being created okay so it's nothing but channels made by the running water in the later stages we come to know that the soil erosion has occurred how by looking at the ravines and the gullies and sudden burst of excessively heavy rain resulting in a large runoff of surplus water are the principal factors. So the main factor is the heavy rainfall. And there are other causes also for soil erosion and those are nothing but the slope of the land that is sliding of the land, removal of the natural protective coat of vegetation. So again there because of that the natural uh, protective coat is gone. The existence of ruts. What are ruts? So ruts is nothing but it's a deep path created uh, due to some reason. Now for example I can say it's uh, imagine a muddy road and a truck moves, a heavy truck goes in that road. So you get to see a deep track that is made by a wheel. It, make, it makes in that soft ground. So it's something like that. Okay, Ruts are nothing but deep paths along which the water can flow. And it will flow in a momentum. What is momentum? Speed. And the absence of any checks to such flow. That is, maybe uh, soil erosion can occur even when we don't uh, check the water flow in any area. The large quantities of precious soil, it can be washed away if such conditions exist. So it is nothing but the soil is very precious because the upper layer of that soil is very precious and because of that the vegetation and everything occurs. So if that is washed away, obviously we are losing it. So he, the writer is saying that we have to be very careful with that. The menace which soil erosion presents to the continuous of successful agriculture is an alarming one in many parts of India, calling urgently for attention and preventive action. The terracing of the land, the construction of buns to check the flow of water, the practice of conto cultivation and the planting of appropriate types of vegetation are amongst the measures that have been suggested. It is obvious that the aim should be to check the flow of water at the earliest possible stage before it has acquired any appreciable momentum and correspondingly large destructive power. In the ninth paragraph, the writer says that the menace, what is menace? It is nothing but danger, which soil erosion presents to the continuous successful agriculture. It is an alarming one, that is, it is an important problem that is being faced in India and we have to do something and take some preventive action. 
now the terracing so he is telling about the measures which can be used to prevent soil erosion and what are those first one he is suggesting is the terracing of the land now what is terracing of the land in terracing it happens is preparing different levels now a piece of sloped plain that has been cut into series of successively receding flat platforms so it is nothing but uh, it is made like a step so that is called as terracing of the land the next point is the construction of bunds to check the flow of water what are bunds it is nothing but wall around storage it's a huge like a dam okay the next reason that he is telling or a measure that can be used to prevent is the practice of conto cultivation so uh, look at the pronunciation of it first it's c o n t o u r you pronounce it as conto okay it's not conter it's conto and conto cultivation is nothing but cultivation along the same level of elevation to prevent erosion and planting of appropriate types of vegetation so all these are some measures that can be suggested now it is obvious that our main aim is to check the flow of that water in the earliest possible stage we need to know it in the beginning itself we can prevent destruction in a larger cause water is the basis of all life every animal and every plant contains a substantial proportion of free or combined water in its body and no kind of physiological activity is possible in which the fluid does not play an essential part water is of course necessary for animal life while moisture in the soil is equally imperative for the life and growth of plants and trees the preservation and utilization of water is thus fundamental for human welfare apart from artesian water the ultimate source in all cases is rain or snowfall much of indian agriculture depends on seasonal rainfall and is therefore very sensitive to any failure or irregularity of the same the problems of soil erosion and of inadequate or irregular rainfall are closely connected with each other it is clear that the adoption of techniques preventing soil erosion would also help to conserve and keep the water where it is wanted in other words on and in the soil and such techniques therefore serve a double purpose now the writer is saying that the water is a basis of all life you all know that that water is a basis of all life without water nobody can stay alive so every animal and every plant contains a substantial proportion what is substantial large in size so they say that our, in our entire body is also we have some water content inside our body too so he is telling that there is no such physiological activity in the world which does not involve this fluid and water is of course necessary for the animal life but it is also in very important that is imperative what is imperative important for the life and growth of plants and trees you all know that so the preservation and utilization of this water is very very important you cannot neglect that part so now he is saying apart from this artesian water what is artesian water the underground water springing from the hole that is we try to save the rain water or whatever underground water is present so he is telling apart from this water the only source of water for us is rain or snowfall and there is no other sources so much of our indian agriculture depends on this rainfall and therefore it is very sensitive to any failure now in case there is no rainfall for this entire year then there is no vegetation so what will we do we don't have water so we have to save water we have to be we have to use that water in a proper manner now the problems of soil erosion or this irregular rainfall are very closely connected to each other they are all in, dependent on each other so it is clear that the adoption of techniques preventing soil erosion will help us to conserve the water and it should be where it should actually be that is on and in the soil and the techniques that are being used we have to double we have to use it We, the techniques that are being used we have to use it and try to save water as much as we can 
It is evident, however, that in a country having only a seasonal rainfall, an immense quantity of rainwater must necessarily run off the ground. The collection and utilization of this water is therefore of vital importance. Much of it flows down into the streams and rivers and ultimately finds its way to the sea. Incredibly, large quantities of the precious fluid are thus lost to the country. The harnessing of our rivers, the waters of which now mostly run to waste, is a great national problem which must be considered and dealt with on national lines. Vast areas of land, which at present are mere scrub jungle, could be turned into fertile and prosperous country by courageous and well-planned action. In the 11th paragraph, the writer t- wants to tell us that it is evident, that is, it is very clear that the seasonal rainfall that we have, it is the main cause for rainwater, that is, it is main cause for the water right now. The collection and utilization of this water is very, very important. So what happens when it rains? What happens? The entire water is not being collected in your well or the underground storage. Most of the water is being flowed down in the into the streams and rivers and ultimately it finds the sea. So what happens? Large quantities of this water is being lost. We are not using or utilizing it. We are taking only 40% of it might be. The other 60% is lost. So he is trying to say that we have to try to get that entire 100% and save that entire rainwater which is very precious to us. So the harnessing of our rivers, the waters of which now mostly run to waste, he is telling it is going to waste. That is a national problem and we must solve it or we should try to solve it and then he talks about the scrub jungles what are scrub jungles that are forest consisting of stunted trees and they would turn the entire country into fertile land and the, make the country a prosperous place closely connected with the conservation of water supplies is the problem of afforestation The systematic planting of suitable trees in every possible or even in impossible areas and the development of what one can call civilized forests as distinguished from wild and untamed jungles is one of the most urgent needs of India. Such plantation would directly and indirectly prove a source of untold wealth to the country. They would check soil erosion and conserve the rainfall of the country from flowing away to waste. Now the main topic that he wants to talk is about afforestation. So what is afforestation? It is the process of planting areas of land with trees. So here he is trying to say that the systematic planting of the suitable trees in very every possible and even in impossible areas should be utilized or we should give more importance so that we can create some man-made forest that is the civilized forest civilized is nothing but the man-made forest so that we can distinguish from the wild and untamed jungles and it is very important it is a important or urgent need of india that we need it So such plantation would directly or indirectly, it will prove as a source of wealth to the country. And they would also check the soil erosion and conserve the rainfall from flowing away to waste. That is, we are trying to control both soil erosion as well as rainfall. We will get huge rainfall and that won't go to waste. The measures necessary to control the movement of water and conserve the supplies of it can also serve subsidiary purposes of value to the life of the countryside. By far, the cheapest form of internal transport in a country is by boats and barges through canals and rivers. We hear much about programs of rail and road construction but far too little about the development of internal waterways in India. Then again, the harvesting of water supplies usually also makes possible the development of hydroelectric power. The availability of electric power 
would make a tremendous difference to the life of the countryside and enable the rural economy to be improved in various directions. In particular, it would enable underground water to be tapped to a greater extent than at present and thus help to overcome the difficulties arising from irregularity or inadequacy of other sources of supply. Now the measures necessary to control the movement of water is already discussed. What is the next purpose of the water? And you all know that by far the cheapest form of internal transport in a country is by boats and barges. What are barges? Same, it's some kind of a large boat with flat bottoms. So he's trying to say that you all know that boat is the cheapest transport, but most of them don't use it. Why? We hear much about programs of rail and road construction and very less of internal waterways. Is it correct? Because now, for example, when there is a new road constructed or whether there is a new railway uh, track opened or there is a new train towards one place or the other, it usually comes in the news. People give more importance to it. But what happens when a new boat is being launched or uh, a new canal is being created? There, people are not giving more importance for the development of these waterways. So the writer is telling that when we know it is the most cheapest and it is most efficient there, still people are not giving importance to it. And again he wants to tell about harvesting of water supplies. It usually makes or gives possibility to the development of hydroelectric power. Now what is hydroelectric power? Electricity produced from hydropower. And here, the availability of this electric power, it will make a huge difference to the life of the countryside, the poor people, the villages. Because of this water, if you use this water for creating electricity, so many villages around will get light or will get electricity and their houses will not be dark at night. They will have light. So it will help to improve the rural economy. And also it will improve the irregularity of the supply towards those villages. In one sense, water is the commonest of liquids. In another sense, it is the most uncommon of liquids with amazing properties which are responsible for its unique power of maintaining animal and plant life. The investigation of the nature and properties of water is therefore of the highest scientific interest and is far from an exhausted field of research. In the last paragraph, the writer wants to say that in one sense, water is the most commonest of liquids. You all know that water is very common. But in another sense, he wants to tell you that it is the most uncommon of liquids. Correct? Because this entire world is, is covered with water. But I think we have only 3% of fresh water which we are able to use. So he is telling yes it is common but it is uncommon also. And it has amazing properties and it which are responsible for its unique power of maintaining animal and plant life. So it is up to us that we have to maintain the water flow as well as prevent it from going to waste.